Yes, everybody, what's going on? My name is Stephen Allison. This is Adam McCola, Mourinho's biggest fan. We have got Paul from Rankcast joining us. We have got Dale from Stretty News. And an absolute blast from the past. Musa from ESPN FC is joining us. And he's just reactivated his Tinder because he's very <laughs> hopeful that this is going to lead to something. So if you're in the greater Berlin area, then you should definitely go and check him out and see if you can get yourself a little bit of Musa loving. Musa, what's happening, our kid? <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> right, so for us, as much fun as we can all have in the introduction, things are not fun. Adam, can we just keep talking about Tinder? That'd be way more fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, I've got a 10 kilometer <sighs> radius. I just thought I'd keep it. <laughs> right, so it's not going to plan, is it, at the moment? Let's be honest with ourselves. No one really thought we'd be getting dumped out of the League Cup by Derby and Super Frank Lampard, or Fat Frank Lampard. Um, Mourinho and Pogba. Musa, as you're back from the past and coming on here for the first time in a long time let's what is going on with these two isn't it a little bit embarrassing as a united fan what is going on these two butting heads making it very public it's very 2018 the way this is all playing out isn't it yeah it's credit it's incredibly embarrassing um first of all i don't like the fact there are so many leaks in the dressing room and just some behind the scenes but i think they're both embarrassing themselves and the only question to me is who's going to leave old trafford sooner um Mourinho is who Mourinho is. He's always been this kind of guy, confrontational, picking a fight with his main player. But I've got to say, as a big fan of Pogba's, he's really disappointed me because he came back from the World Cup. He had this statesman-like role. He was a dressing room leader. I thought he would just come back and perform on the pitch and then allow Mourinho, to be honest, the rope to hang himself. But instead, he's got involved in the kind of petty politics. He's almost like a YouTube commenter in terms of like the way he's leaking stuff out. And like, you know, it's just, he takes every available opportunity to to sort of keep the fight simmering you know he lets Mina Raiola go off and sound off and it's just it's a bit embarrassing to be honest I thought he'd kind of um I thought he'd evolved you know after a big summer like that he should just be enjoying the fruits of his labor but he's not doing that Dale what's your take on it I think as it drags on it's getting more embarrassing it's more like a a sitcom episode um Mourinho when he was at his best when he was when he was the special one he had a bit of edge about him, and this wouldn't have happened. For instance, when Wayne Rooney wanted to engineer a move from Manchester United, Ferguson made it clear to the press that it didn't drag on too long, whereas this whole episode of Pogba and, and Mourinho is getting to the stage where as no one comes out of this, um, the better person, they, they're both in it together, they're both making matters worse, and they're, they're kind of almost making fans pick sides, and that shouldn't be the case. The priority here should be Manchester United, Every time we get a bad result, this just adds to it. Um, and it's, it's circus-like. We need to get back on track with good football again, good results, and this is just um, getting in the way. Paul, um, with all the links coming out, and I will mention that this is before Jose's press conference, which I'm sure is going to be pay-per-view watching um, before the game against West Ham. These leaks really remind me of the Moyes era when things started to have the wheels come off it a little bit. I mean, it's, it's, ex, it's not as accelerated as it was under Moyes, but now the leaks are undermining uh, the manager and the team a little bit. What's your take? Yeah, it's really, it's really interesting to try and work out what's... Because leaks is an interesting term here. This is the stuff they're all saying publicly. We don't need, it's not like really like what's going on behind the scenes and what's coming out of the dressing room that journalists are getting like, you know, meeting players in underground car parks to get the real scoop. They're just going on telly and going, I hate him, he's rubbish. You know, um, that's, that's kind of what's happening. And, you know, we had the big Pogba debate, uh, the huge Pogba debate, sorry, a couple of weeks ago. And, um, and since then, Pogba's played two games for United, scored two goals and got two assists. So you'd be thinking that those of us who were kind of backing him were like loving life. But unfortunately, behind the scenes, the there is that thing of going, stop talking. You win this fight. Pogba, he, his advisors are advising him very badly, by the way, because he wins this fight by not doing anything. He doesn't have to throw a punch. He has to lean back on the ropes and let Jose punch himself out um, because that is what will happen. But instead, like Musa said, Pogba's getting involved and it's not, he just does not need to. It's It's not wise and it's definitely not edifying so yes yeah, it's, it's a real shame and you know I, I'm not a big fan of Mourinho at this point and I never really have been a big fan of Mourinho to be honest but you can't really argue with him taking the vice captaincy off Pogba to be honest uh, Adam All right. I, think, I think it is interesting I, oh you're talking okay. yeah um, I've just been reading this to try and figure out what the hell has been going on seems as it <laughs> seems to be following 
his past. Um, we've seen this all before with Jose Mourinho and Jose Mourinho teams, but I will echo what Musa and what Paul said. Um, I'm a huge Paul Pogba fan. And you don't want to hear your players coming out and talking and saying things. But what I will say is that whole environment and that whole kind of mood has been set by the manager a long time ago when he's been speaking about Paul Pogba publicly in the press. He can't then say, oh, Pogba, you should do your talking in-house because you reap what you sow. And I feel like the manager, you can say the manager's got a hierarchy or whatever, but what has Pogba exactly said wrong? I don't understand. He said the other week that we should attack. The fans were saying the exact same thing the other day. Um, and then you come to this week, Paul Pogba's in training, and it's all, it's all exploding in front of the press. And you say it's leaks. The, the cameras were there. The manager knew the camera was there. Well, this is one instance. Like, there the is manager leaks. knew the camera was there and still opted to have a conversation he could have had in his office on the training pitch in front of the cameras. And to me, that felt very calculated. And we've seen it yep. with both of them. It's not just Jose Mourinho's fault. We've seen it with both of them having little, like with what Pogba said. What Pogba said is totally correct. We should be attacking. But again, you keep it to yourself or you tell the manager. What Jose Mourinho said about Pogba, like asking him, did you post that after, after the match? Because if you did, that's disrespectful. But do it behind closed doors. And I think... I don't think what either of them has said has been wrong. I just think the way it's been handled has been totally wrong. And I do think that is a result of a Jose Mourinho club. We've seen this before and we will see All it right. again. We've People also like to point this. fingers and say Pogba's this, Pogba's that. No, no manager has ever had pro like problems with Pogba. You can say Fergie. Fergie had a problem with his agent. He didn't have a problem with the player. And ultimately, I just think this is leading to one position and that's the manager going and deep down I, I really don't care because the results aren't aren't telling me that this is a manager we should trust and this is a manager we should allow to just say all right Pogba you can do one because that's where Fergie earned the right to sell his best players and to make those big decisions was by getting results on the pitch and frankly frankly you take Pogba out of the situation Manchester United are not good enough Pogba did not play on Tuesday Pogba did not play on Tuesday Pogba did not play against Sevilla. Pogba has not played in a lot of games where Manchester United have been poor. And people like to point out, it's Martial's fault, it's Pogba's fault, it's Shaw's fault, it's the players, it's this and that. No matter who plays in the team, we play the same standard of football. We say in the same style of football and we don't ever see anything new. I watch That's Wolves. That's not true. I that watch, true. I don't, I that watch Wolves. True. That's not true. That I watch Wolves. I watch Derby. They play better football than us. They have lesser players. They play better football than us. That's because they have coaches that are encouraging their players, that are trying to improve their players. Liverpool, like you can say Man United should spend money on defenders and we'd be playing better and the results would be better. Liverpool have Joel Gomez and Trent Arnold Alexander in their defence. Like, it's not just about what we're buying for you. We've spent a lot of money. So I think it's a mess. I think it's a total mess. But right. I think Pogba's in the wrong, Jose's in the wrong. And ultimately, there's only going to be one left at the end of this season. At what point then, I'm going to come back to you with this one, Paul. At what point do you have to just say back the manager? Because if you listen to what Sir Alex says <clears throat> in his various books, actually, he says, as soon as the manager's lost that control, it's over. And he has to establish control. Um, now, you can say, yeah, Fergie had earned the right to get rid of whoever he wanted. And he had, absolutely. Fergie sacked United's most successful captain. Sacked him after what he said on MUTV because he came out and criticised him sacked him completely out that was when because he knew he was done as a player though. doesn't Let's matter go. doesn't matter he still sacked the guy he, he still right sacked time. the guy and that was at a time when United hadn't won the league for several years there was a hell of a lot of pressure going on with Fergie at the time there was people that thought Fergie might have lost it and sacking Roy Keane looking back on it with rose tinted glasses you're like oh, it all worked out won the league a couple of years later but at the time people thought Fergie had lost his mind thought Fergie had completely gone Roy off Keane was reservation. no longer a first team fixture but the, the, this I will is say that this is the thing, like he didn't sack Roy Keane in 1999, he sacked him once he was broken and it, it was about control but but Ferguson's vision of control and indeed his relationship with control and the amount that he preaches it as the kind of managerial gold standard is, a, is more about him than the nature of the role at the club because 
I think if you're Alex Ferguson, then the thing you need to be the best possible version of you as a football manager that you can be is complete unqualified control because your decision making is such a high level. You can't give Mourinho complete unqualified control of a football club. He's repeatedly let his ego spin out of control and pick fights with. And if you look at the pattern of the the types of players that he's built fights with, you've never. I mean, Ferguson was an obsessive builder and rebuilder. Mourinho is not an obsessive builder and rebuilder. They're very different characters, and you can't just give any manager the level of control that Fergie would preach as being the only thing that works. What I would say as well is, before we move on, is look at Eden Hazard this week. Apparently, he was a rat and a snake and all that at Chelsea. Oh, in defence, I mean, people are thinking that I'm just jumping jump into defence. I'm mostly playing devil's advocate. Look you're playing the with that, the devil at the moment. Look That's at the clubs that Jose with. lasted three seasons at. They're, players, they're places that people last 11 months at maximum. But he won the league in his second season and he had the... Like, he hasn't... He hasn't mate, we're eight points off top spot. <laughs> it's September. We're, at, we're out of two competitions. It's September. We're Man United. You, we wouldn't have accepted this sure. on the Moyes. Right. Let's rank the managers then. Dale, I'm going to come to you first. Post Fergie, this has three. I'm going to throw Ryan Giggs in the mix as well because I like to do things like that. Let's rank how our managers have done since Sir Alex Ferguson stepped down. Obviously, for those at home that have tried to block it out, we did have David Moyes as manager for a brief period. Oh, my um, God. Rank them and tell us who comes out on the top for all of those. I think it is very difficult to put gigs in there, but I'm definitely having Moyes last. Um, <laughs> he was a disaster from the start. Because it's the right thing to do, yeah. Yeah, um, should never have got the job and looked disaster from start to finish, like I say. Um, next, uh, because he was only interim manager, again, it's hard, it's hard to rate Giggsy, but because of the romance behind it, um, I'm going to throw him in next, behind Van Gaal, because Van Gaal, before he came, there was a sense of excitement after the, the World Cup. Um, and on the back of Moyes, I think anyone Probably would have been really better. Um, it didn't work out. Is that to say he was a, a terrible manager throughout his career? No. He did do good jobs. And there's a sense to me to kind of feel a small bit sorry for him. But look, he was a bit of a disaster as it came to the end, although he did win an FA Cup and, and we all celebrated that day. So he's second. And I'm going to give the best manager since Ferguson to Mourinho. Um, I think he's. we can all have our um, say about things he hasn't done too well. Um, his demeanour at times and his treatment of certain players. When it comes to, to this list, um, there's no one that I can see that deserves the top spot. You know, he's won two trophies, the Europa League, the League Cup. Um, we expected more. We expected a league title. We haven't got one of them, and it's not good enough. But um, in that list, he he is number one. Musa, how would you rank our uh, four managers post Fergie? That's excellent for all the reasons that Dale gave. I think that's fantastic. And the frustration with Mourinho is that you always feel like it wouldn't take that much for United to be playing the football they should be playing. You know, the signings he made, that incredible first window by Mkhitaryan, Pogba, um, you know, and Ibrahimovic. These four players were just all terrific. They were like A levels, you know, A class signings. And for me, it's the frustration that he seems to have almost gone backwards. And one thing I want to throw in, I know we've moved off the Pogba subject, but I just wonder, I just wonder if one reason why Pogba's being a bit more vocal is seeing his friend Mkhitaryan ground into the dust without speaking out at all. And Mkhitaryan basically was a model professional, took absolute hell from Mourinho and never really answered back in public and really did lose the public support, you know, the kind of the, the support, the narrative, and he was seen as a weak character, he didn't really care about being professional. So I just think that Mourinho was doing absolutely fine and then just hit the self-destruct button and you know it's going to be his you know he'll leave Old Traff within a year I think and it'll be this tragic story but if he leaves the next six months United still have a squad that can compete maybe a year and a half two years from now Paul would you be any different on those four? Yeah I mean I'd put Ryan Giggs top because uh, that day when the pictures came out of them like the class of 92 running training on the Friday before the Norwich game it's like it was such a relief, but obviously, obviously, I'm, I'm, I am, I am joking. No, um, a wise man once well, told me, <laughs> a wise man once told me that uh, David Moyes' big problem was that instead of trying to grow into the job, he tried to shrink the club around him. <laughs> uh, 
See, Moose is nodding. It was Moose that said it to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm so but, old, I forgot it. I'm so old, yeah. I forgot it. Um, but the, the, I think, I think that's definitely true. Um, if if I was picking my favourites, obviously Giggsy would be first. But I'd have Van Hal second because he was very funny and uh, very ridiculous. And but I've never been as miserable watching football as I was under Van Hal. Like I don't really like Mourinho. It's not comparable with uh, the only Mourinho game so far that was comparable with the Van Hal era was maybe the bright that Brighton away game and maybe Sevilla. one or two games. Yeah, Se- I was going to say Sevilla was horrific. I can one or two games around. One, <laughs> one or two around Sevilla. But do you remember Norwich at home? I was sat in the press conference after that game. Norwich at home around Christmas time in the second season. Still and Van Hal was said, bad as well. Yeah, it was terrible. But December Van Hal said in the, in the press conference afterwards, I have to stick with my philosophy. This is what means I am a good coach. Or should I say what used to mean I was a good coach? And I was like, oh, my God. I'm watching a man break down before my eyes. It was really sad. Um, but no, I mean, it's clear that Mourinho has been the best manager post Ferguson um, by a country mile it's just that the competition he he was playing against was a man that was hideously out of his depth and someone that was completely unable to bring a workable version of his style to of play to bear on the squad and made really bad signings for the most part as well so it's a very easy competition for Mourinho to win no, I agree with I agree with uh, what everyone said really um, obviously Giggs is the one that made me made my balls tingle a bit because it's like wow we've seen Giggsy come from like academy player all the way through and then he's our manager it's like ooh, it's amazing I, I just really old. loved it I felt old. wasn't he playing before you were born Adam pretty much yeah but you know <laughs> who cares I still got to see him somehow some way maybe through my dad's eyes I <laughs> <laughs> um, as for what you were saying about Pumba earlier, okay. Then. Oh come on, man! We no, finished no, this. Thing. Just one thing. Maybe Pug was the voice for many more people than himself, and that's why he's speaking out because he can. Oh, that now, that is a very good point because we only see, like you know, we only see a very small part of what's coming out of the dressing room, and there must be so much frustration. Pogba does have the leverage; like he's won a World Cup, and he's gone back into the dressing room. And no one can deny that he's a world-class midfielder. He's just coming off the back of that. And Grand so Sunas does. <laughs> there must be a method to how he's playing it. That's a very good point. Uh, I, would, I would agree, except for the fact that he's very clearly tried to engineer a move away from the club this summer. Wow. Otherwise, well, I, I would agree. I, look, I, I, agree with that. I agree with that. Like he, That's got to be... I, I said to a friend the other day... Oh, though, why though, to be honest? Try to... <laughs> <laughs> season ticket. Man United women, they wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. Go on, let me in at the ladies. No comment. Why not? Absolutely Why no not? Comment. They score goals every week. Better than the men's. Anyway, we're going to cut to an ad break. Right, it's predicted 11 time. Uh, Musa, I'm going to tell you how this crazy game works. Basically, you predict an 11, you get half of them wrong, and then you go bottom of the league. That's how it's going to work. Okay? Uh-huh. Unless you're me, you win the league. Um, it is based on that average amount because last year's was ludicrous. So we're bringing in something a little bit more fair. It's still not the best game in the world but it's the game that we're playing at the moment. Such is life. Uh, and it is at the moment. Mo Butt is 10. Uh, one appearance, top of the league. Doesn't actually count yet. Only starts counting after five appearances. Paul is on 9.3 after three appearances. Dale is on nine after three appearances. Uh, Adam, you're on eight after three appearances. Um, John Chin and Scott propping up the table down there at the bottom. So, Musa, I'm going to come to you first. Give us your starting 11 for this weekend's trip to the Amers. I think something really weird is going to happen this this week. I'm just going to be a bit of a drama queen and just throw it out there so everyone remembers me because I'm trying to make an impression for Tinder. So, <laughs> listen, hey, listen, you've got to market yourself. Look, so in goal, De Gea, left back, Shaw, right back, Dalot, centre back, Smalling, Lindelof. Midfield, I think something weird is going to happen. I reckon, you know, I think it could be Matic, Fellaini and Fred to start. Jesus, wet. Only because Fellaini has been actually brilliant for the last six months really you know really fantastic what he does and the front three Lingard Lukaku Sanchez I think he'll persist with those three I will agree with that um, Fellaini's been very very effective but I think there's been a couple of goals where I think yeah. because he's not a natural number six he's drifted into the defensive line and left that area that a natural number six would um, no would very fair especially very fair. against Close Derby well. he's not so good at that no that's absolutely right Paul do you want to give us your start in 11 for this uh, weekend's trip yeah, um, the 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 two big decisions 
that I um denied about for ages was one where the Pogba would start, but I have put him in the lineup. But the other one I'll come on to in a bit. Dave in goal, obviously. Um, Valencia, although, although we do need to start talking about how it might not necessarily be the right choice to automatically assume that Valencia is our first choice right back. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but I do think we need to start thinking about having that conversation. It's like we need um, is putting down in it. It's a bad conversation to have. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so Valencia, Smalling, Lindelof, Shaw. Uh, then I have gone for Pogba. I've gone for Pogba, Fellaini, Matic. I think that we are... I don't know what DEFCON level we're at, but um, I, I'm not, I don't know if we're there yet. We might well be. I won't be surprised if he doesn't play. The, the decision I am out about for ages, which might sound completely ridiculous, was I was genuinely considering not selecting Alexis Sanchez in this lineup because I really think there is an actual chance that Tony Marshall will play on the left wing ahead of Alexis Sanchez. Now, I know that's a completely ridiculous statement to make, but Sanchez has been so terrible and Martial has looked properly bright every time he's played recently now even Jose Mourinho must have seen this but obviously I don't think he will have done so I've gone for Lingard Lukaku Sanchez is everyone forgetting that Marcus Rashford exists he's back in contention no it's done he's done Mm, free man I won't mind seeing him on the left Dale what's your starting 11 I started off with the here Dalot Smalling Lingard or Lindelof and Shaw I think (laughs) Dalot I think Dalla has to come in. I think his delivery into the box is far superior to Valencia. He can get up and down the line much better. I know Mourinho doesn't want to throw him in too soon, but it's getting to the stage that Valencia just hasn't got the legs anymore. Uh, and we need to look after him in that respect. Midfield, Fellaini, Matic. And I think Pogba will start. I don't think... We need to make situations even worse and, and, and give the media more to talk about as bad as it is. You, uh, you don't you don't think that, Dale, but I know a Portuguese football manager who might. I know, I know, I know. Look, but that's the thing with Mourinho. Sometimes he is quite unpredictable that way. Um, and we don't really know what he is thinking. And, you know, as, as Adam said, he knew the cameras were there. I would have thought it would have been a shrewd thing to... To maybe call a pog by side in the in the in the office rather than do it in front of everyone and make matters worse. So um, we don't know why he's going to do it there. Matic, Fellaini, and Pogba for me in midfield and up front. I haven't forgot about Rashford on the left. I know Martial has been doing very well lately, but B- Mourinho has spoke a lot about Rashford's suspension and I think he's looking forward to bringing him back in after his um, displays and international duty. And up front alongside him, um, Lukaku and I think Lingard will get a start too. Not in defence though. So you think he's going to leave Sanchez out? Yeah, yeah. I think um, a lot has been said about that lately, and I'm not ruling Sanchez out totally in terms of the future. I think a degree of patience in our behalf still needs to be required. Um, look, we know he's a quality player. It's not happening for him right now. But look, he's not the only player at Manchester United. It's not happening for. Um, so look, let's see. I don't. Are you going for a team? Yeah. David De Gea in goal. I don't think he'll pick the low this week um, weekend. Although I would personally, I think with the whole Pogba's not my vice captain issue anymore, not picking Valencia means that someone else gets it. Like, and it's like I think he'll. Mike Valencia Smalling will of the, MUFC. Valencia captain. will be the captain at the weekend. So De Gea, Valencia. Um, I think he'll go with Smalling and Lindelof again, um, and then at left back Luke Shaw and rightly so. In the midfield, I've been. I think Matic is done. You know. I think he just we just need to not play Matic anymore. I really think he's done. I think there's some games where Matic is required and Matic will be needed. Maybe Chelsea away or I don't know, something like that. But there's games where we should be the attacking team, where we should be putting the onus on the opposition's defence. I don't think Matic is good enough. I watched him there against Derby County midweek in a game again where he didn't need to play, really. And him, Jones and Young were just awful in that triangle there. It was slow, it was... It was just not very good to watch. Now, I know Matic was probably going to start, but me personally, I wouldn't start him. Um, I'd go with Fellaini. I'd go with, um, which will surprise a lot of people, but I think Fellaini is ahead of Matic in the pecking order for me now. I'd go with Fellaini, I'd go with Fred, and I'd go with Pogba. Um, I do want to see Andreas Pereira brought in for some games, but at home um, is probably more likely than West Ham away. Um, I think Anthony Martial should keep his spot in the team. Um, I don't think he will, um, which is just... It's really strange. I remember the manager saying after he scored against Young Boys, 
Uh, Alexis Sanchez hasn't didn't get to play today, and Martial played 90 minutes. So I'll bring Sanchez in next game. But Sanchez played 270 minutes before that game, and he was awful in every single one of them. So <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. Where's the carrot for these Rashford players to do well? In no, no, for anybody. If Rashford played well against young boys and scored, you should keep him in the team. Where? Where is the carrot say, if you do well, you'll get a spot in the team? Because at the moment, there doesn't seem to be that for Andreas Pereira in midfield because Matic is coming in regardless of form. Uh, out wide for Rashford and Martial because Sanchez is constantly playing because of form. Up top, where Lukaku is playing, and I know he scored a lot of goals this season, but he's always going to play. And I think there's a few areas there where a bit of competition and it mixes the team up a little bit and it gets Lukaku worrying for his spot. It gets Rashford thinking, I've got a chance here. So... I do think there's a few spots where it needs to be rotated a bit more, but we won't. And I think we'll see um, Rashford, Lukaku and Lingard. Listen, are we are we absolutely sure that what's happening with Alexis Sanchez isn't just the fact that he's got the number seven shirt on his back? Um, producer, Remove the curse! Producers Chris... <laughs> Listen, I don't endorse Prick. any of that, but Man United number sevens, Chris sent me this stat, producer Chris sent me this stat yesterday. Man United number sevens have scored 13 league goals since Cristiano Ronaldo left the club. The so 1-3, 13 since 2009? 2009? Can I just say, um, I just say as well, um, in the last, since Fergie left, no one scored more goals than Aaron Marshall. Um, so you, you swear you're kind of shouting abuse at Michael Owen understandable but probably misguided hashtag Michael remove Owen, the curse Michael Owen is the number seven at United who has scored the most league goals and that's since why there's Cristiano a curse Ronaldo. that's why there's a curse and he needs to remove the curse or I'm going to remove <laughs> allegedly probably can't um, say that I wanted to talk about Delo because um, everyone bar Adam picked him and Adam only didn't pick him I think because he's expecting Valencia to come back in I didn't pick him. I'm, okay, sorry. I thought you did. I didn't think he was great against Derby. It's, better, it's, better, it's just better than Valencia, though, isn't it? But defensively, um, you've got to remember this is Jose Mourinho in charge. I think he'll be looking at the way the crosses came in from his side and he'll be going, not ready yet. But what I can say for you is we have Valencia as a fullback because he used to be a winger and we think, oh, that'll be good going forward. He'll get some balls into the box. He's not crossed the ball into the box since that season. Rooney scored like a million headers. No, yeah. but you can't do it. Position, you look at Diogo Delo, yeah? The confidence he had to step up and take a penalty in the shootout. The assist for Fellaini when the pressure was on. I know defensively he's not great, but nor is Valencia. It's not like you've got the best right back in the world there and you're thinking, oh, Delo's not great defensively. I actually nor Valencia is Valencia. You've got more to gain. He's pretty look, good defensively. We're out of the title race in September. Why not blood some you? Because I'm just saying this is Jose's head. And then he's head. I'm oh, looking yeah. at him and I'm going... I He's forgot who our manager was. Let me start right reading up then. again to find out what's going Musa, on. Musa, do you want to talk to me about West Ham? What should we be expecting, fearing? And how do you think Pellegrini's getting on? Well, they'll be very confident because they've just beaten Macclesfield 8-0. Um, they got a draw against Chelsea, a very good draw, but there are weaknesses. So I would say their weaknesses are down the flank with Zabaleta. We can attack them using Shaw because he's got the speed on him. We can also get on the other flank because they've got Felipe Anderson on the wing, who's not the best at tracking back, so we can get him behind him with the speed of Valencia. You don't need that much creativity because you're going to get possession and territory down that flank. Um, I think as well, you know, we're pretty aggressive in the midfield too. We can push them, press them pretty hard high up. And, you know, Lingard is actually not having a very good season, to be honest. But one thing Lingard always does is he's always an 8 out of 10 for defensive intensity in the final third. So if you press very high up, you can create chances. Um, yeah, that's what I, that's why I see the kind of pressure points uh, for United to take advantage of. Paul, what do we know about West Ham? What should we be looking out for? I mean, it's kind of interesting what's happening in West Ham because they they bought some players this summer, and you kind of thought, actually, this looks like these look like for a club that has been that's made us look like really functional and well run. Um, <laughs> for for a club in that kind of state, they they made some pretty astute purchases this summer, and at first it looked like it was just going to be a total disaster. They didn't win five games into the season, maybe four games into the season. They hadn't got a single point. But they made the sensible decision and jo dropped Jack Wilshire from their midfield and went to a midfield three because they were trying to play Mark Noble and Jack Wilshire together as a midfield two in a 4-4-2 in the Premier League in 2018, which is, yeah, exactly. Like That is a headache waiting to happen. And amazingly, they didn't win any games playing that way. But um, they dropped Wilshire for Obiang, which is... It's a pretty bold move. 
um, and and are playing a midfield three, which with Declan Rice playing as the kind of holding midfield, and and he's obviously a sort of bright prospect for the future for club and whichever country he ends up playing for. Um, but the the thing is, the, the this game should be a total walk in the park for United. If you just match up player for player, it's not even close. Felipe Anderson is the only player who would trouble United's squad, let alone the first team. But uh, you just have to match United for intensity and we look really vulnerable. And if West Ham, all West Ham have to do is get United on the back foot early because our team is so shorn of confidence that I can't go into these games going, yeah, we're going to definitely win. It's going to be fine. It's going to be easy because as soon as anyone scores against us, we start to look panicky. Uh, Dale, West Ham, worried? Yeah, to- um, I totally agree with Paul there about our lack of confidence. You know, if, if, they, if they come out with us at the very start, it's going to get nervy. And one player we've linked to it in the summer was Aaron Atovic, if I got that pronunciation right. But it's, it's, it's forwards like that that concern me with this centre-back partnership because Lindelof is still kind of assessing him at the moment. But I think he struggles when it comes to aggressive forwards. I don't think he likes that, and I think that might be something that over time he might get used to and improve on. But it's just the that challenge might make things very, very difficult for United on on Saturday. And if they do get that early lead or they do go goal ahead, I'm already fearing the worst. You're absolutely right about the confidence. You can see it anytime someone scores against us, we just crumble. Um, Adam. Mm-hmm. I'm glad he mentioned Jack Wilshere actually because he's an absolute myth of a player. And What's he that? injured again. Oh, oh. I think I think Jack Wilshere gets a very harsh treatment from people who aren't asked <laughs> because he was an extremely bright talent yeah. and and it's because of really bad injuries that he hasn't been able to develop into anything like the player that people thought he could be. And and I always think even if even if the the suggestions would be that he's not the most likable character or whatever, um, I still feel a bit like just because he plays for a different team doesn't mean we don't have to be like human about yeah. what is that. I don't like that story. He he can, I you the, the time I, I felt most sorry for. Can I just throw this in? The time I felt most sorry for uh, Jack Wilshere was when Paul Scholes said um, he hasn't really kicked on in the last five years. And the reason I felt sorry for him is because you can tell that Jack Wilshere idolises Scholes, and Scholes basically put him on blast, like, you know, in public. And I think he actually contacted Scholes afterwards to say, look, like, what can I improve? And I just felt at that point, it's like you're kind of like, it's like you're tuning up your guitar and Stevie Wonder goes past and goes, you're not much cop. Like, it's devastating. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, think, I think Wilshere himself, I think he may be his own biggest critic. I think he's fully aware that he should have been. I'm a bigger critic. Yeah. The next it's, 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 no, it's no secret when he was coming through. Like, he had all the ingredients to be a top, top player, you know. And I know I sound like Harry Redknapp saying that, but it, it hasn't worked out. And I think Moose is right there. You know, he, his own critic, and, and, and that's kind of harmed him where he is now. And I stick by my original opinion. Tom Cleverley is better than Jack Wilshere. No. Nah. Oh my goodness. Oh, right on, on West Ham, on by the way. I was, I was rudely interrupted when I was talking about West Ham. Now, <laughs> funnily enough, I watched their game against Arsenal, sat next to Marlon Harewood, mm-hmm. West Ham legend, apparently. Um, sorry, Marlon sorry, I'm almost, almost burning my ears on these hot Did he try and sell you a car? He did. <laughs> Tried to rack my polo up. I said, no thanks, mate. <laughs> anyway, um, West Ham, what I like about, what I think, their problems they could, they could cause us is the fact that Felipe Anderson on the break, Arnautovic running into those lines, we're going to have Valencia and Luke Shaw that push up quite a lot. And against Arsenal, when their fullbacks did the same, Monreal and Bellerin, when they kept mm. doing it, there was so much space. And Felipe Anderson and Arnautovic, they, 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 they utilised that so well. And I feel like they could do the same to us. So maybe Jose might go with three at the back. Um, to prevent that I think he'll, he'll just just Matic in there to get left and right and block it up right I'm going to come to you first give us your score prediction um, it's funny because I think the play I think the dressing room are like the fans it's not funny and I, I think the, the dressing room is, must be split on whether they are behind Jose Mourinho or not and that's why I think we see this kind of this same this same routine of a couple of defeats and then we bounce back and we think 
oh yeah, this is going to go all right again. And then it doesn't. And I think for personal pride, the players will put in a performance this weekend. And I think we'll win 2-1. But I don't think that's a sign that all the troubles are behind us and everything's rosy again because it's been the way United has been for a long time. Dale, give me a score prediction. Going to go one all. Um, I'm not confident going into this game. I think there's, there's a bad, bad feeling around the club. And I know there's claims that they've sorted out their issues after the training ground bust up the other day, but those things just aren't good when it happens. And I do feel Paul Pogba, we can have our own views on him, but I believe he's a very, very popular person in that dressing room and, and, and people like him as, as, as a person, people that know him. And if that's the case, there's definitely a few people thinking, taking his side. And if that's the case and we get more bad results, results talk, talk massive volumes, he's going to lose the dressing room, I fear. I fear. Paul, give me a score prediction. Mm, I think that the last... I, th- I think it's working away from home much better than it's working at home at the moment. And a sort of... A, Mourinho, Mourinho likes a counter-attack, doesn't he? So I'm... I'm going to go for an optimistic 2-1 to Man United. And the fact that we're talking about that being an optimistic result against West Ham shows how rough things have got recently. The band eight in against Macclesfield this week. <laughs> yeah, we play like that these days. So, <sighs> Musa, good score prediction. 1-0. Because oh, historically, God. West Ham has been a tough place to go for United anyway. Like, it's always been a bit of a tough place. They're recovering some of their strength. And I think it'll be a one-all draw, not necessarily because United are poor, but because West Ham are making things work that weren't working before. They shut down Chelsea. Very creditable results. Um, they have to be respected for that. Um, they're going to play above their level, I think, uh, of recent weeks. And United will be slightly subpar, I think. So I think it'll be one-all. I actually agree. I think it'll be one-all. So we've got three one alls predicted and two two ones predicted. Me and Paul are right about everything, so obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Righty, thank you guys for watching. Remember, we are up against the Scousers, and you know how they love to rig a vote. So you need to get involved. You can't just sit there and go, someone else is going to vote because they just put in a bang average goal and made it win the Puskas Award. It wasn't even the best goal scored at Anfield, arguably in that game, I reckon. So. You need to get in there and you need to vote. We are up for a Northwest Football Award and obviously the Scousers are making it priority number one that they want to get everyone voting for it. So stop what you're doing. Stop trying to find Musa on Tinder. Go and vote for us and then get back to that because we want to win an award because let's be honest, it's probably all we're going to win this season. No, 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 no. no, no. They can vote for Tahith Chang as well and David De Gea and we can make it a treble at the Northwest Football Awards and it'll be partying like it's 1999. (laughs) <laughs> you guys are out of control you guys are out of control we'll be for winning an award oh yeah right that's it go give all these guys a follow download tinder download and vote at the finger, and we'll see you in the next one later can we get see tinder as our next shirt please